Previously in Module 11, we've covered important biostatistical concepts used to evaluate and choose useful and appropriate screening or diagnostic tests, as well as to objectively interpret the results, ultimately so that the data can guide rather than mislead medical decision making. In particular, sensitivity and specificity, false positives and negatives, and predictive values. We've also looked at how negative and positive predictive values vary according to the prevalence of the disease in question, which makes for an extra layer of consideration when interpreting test results. Likelihood ratios are an alternative way of describing the performance of a diagnostic test. They summarise the same kind of information as sensitivity and specificity and can be used to calculate the probability of disease after a positive or negative test result. Essentially, they combine information about sensitivity and specificity into a single clinically useful measure. Because of this, they do not depend on the prevalence of the disease, but are fixed independent characteristics of the test itself, unlike predictive values. Likelihood ratios are being used with increasing frequency in the medical literature especially within the context of evidence-based medicine, which is one reason why you need to know how to interpret them. Likelihood ratios come in two configurations, a positive likelihood ratio and a negative likelihood ratio. The positive likelihood ratio is the probability of obtaining a positive test result in a patient with the disease of interest, divided by the probability of a positive test result for a person without the disease. In other words, the probability ratio of getting a true positive versus getting a false positive. Likewise, the negative likelihood ratio is the probability of obtaining a negative test result in a patient with the disease of interest, divided by the probability of a negative test result for a person without the disease. In other words, the probability ratio of getting a false negative versus getting a true negative. Different tests have different likelihood ratios because, as we've covered before, they have different sensitivities and specificities. The clinical implications of a positive or negative test result vary according to the size of the likelihood ratio, as shown by the rules of thumb in this table. A positive likelihood ratio with a high value is useful to rule in a disease, while a negative likelihood ratio with a low value is useful to rule out a disease. Interpreting clinical screening or diagnostic tests requires combining what you know about the clinical context and what you learn from the test result. This involves Bayesian statistics. This is a field of statistics in which prior beliefs are quantified as probabilities and used as part of the calculations. These prior probabilities can be subjective or objective in other words, based on informed opinion or based on solid data or well-established theory. For example, there are some situations in which the prior probabilities are well-defined, like in the analyses of genetic linkage. The prior probability that two genetic loci are linked is known, but in many situations the prior probabilities are little more than a subjective feeling. Many, but not all, statisticians think it's okay to convert these feelings to numbers, like 99% sure or 70% sure, which are then treated as probabilities. The actual calculation involves quantifying the prior belief as a pretest probability, expressing that probability as pretest odds, and then multiplying the pretest odds by the appropriate likelihood ratio depending on whether the lab test result obtained was positive or negative. This will give you a measure of the post-test odds, which can then be re-expressed as a post-test probability. It's straightforward algebra, but even so, many people use a nomogram or online calculator to save time. Let's talk through an example of doing this. Mariah is a 17-year-old student who comes to you with concerns of general fatigue and occasional dizziness. She's no significant past medical history and is not on any regular medicines. She doesn't drink alcohol or smoke and her parents are both healthy. On examination, she has strong peripheral pulses, 
and her cardiovascular system examination is normal. Her blood pressure is 115 over 75 and her pulse 90 beats per minute. She has a BMI of 19.5 as well as having pale skin, conjunctiva and nail beds. Given her clinical symptoms, age and the findings on the physical examination, you suspect that Mariah may have iron deficiency anemia and want to proceed by ordering a serum ferritin lab test. Iron deficiency anemia, as the name implies, is due to insufficient iron. Without enough to produce physiologically normal levels of haemoglobin, this form of anemia may leave you tired and short of breath. The lab test we're going to use measures the concentration of ferritin in Mariah's blood. Ferritin is a protein that helps store iron in your body. A low level of ferritin usually indicates a low level of stored iron. Here are the things we have to calculate or quantify. First up is the pretest probability. We need to quantify our prior belief, i.e. our clinical suspicion, that Mariah has iron deficiency anemia. We want to be as objective as we can by looking for a pretest probability based on solid published data. This paper has prevalence data from the CDC for iron deficiency anemia. Prevalence is the number of people who have the disease of interest throughout a given period of time in the general population. We'll learn more about it in Module 12. The prevalence for iron deficiency anemia for women in Mariah's age range is 12% if we go with the more recent 1999-2000 numbers. This means that during that year 12% of women aged 12 to 49 had iron deficiency anemia. So any female patient in Mariah's age group who walked into a clinic before ordering a test would have had a 12% pre-test probability of iron deficiency anemia. Next we need to convert the pre-test probability into pre-test odds. As a side note, odds and probability are two alternatives for expressing precisely the same concept, which is that of chance. Every probability can be expressed as odds, every odds can be expressed as a probability. Some scientific fields tend to prefer using probabilities, other fields tend to favour odds. There's no consistent advantage to using one or the other. This gives us a pretest odds of 0 0.136. To determine the post-test odds of iron deficiency anemia, we need to multiply the pretest odds by the positive likelihood ratio for serum ferritin. We're using the positive likelihood ratio because Mariah's test result was positive. You find an article that gives you sensitivity and specificity information for the serum ferritin test for iron deficiency anemia. This allows us to calculate a positive likelihood ratio of 6. This means that Mariah's test result would be substantially more likely to be seen in someone with as opposed to someone without iron deficiency anemia. Doing the calculation gives us a post-test odds of 0 0.816. Finally, we want to convert the post-test odds back to post-test probability, which is more clinically intuitive, which gives us a final post-test probability of 0 0.45 or 45%. The positive serum ferritin test increased the likelihood that Mariah does indeed have iron deficiency anemia. Let's look at the calculations and change in post-test probability if Mariah had had a negative serum ferritin test result instead. The pre-test probability and odds are the same as before. This time we need to calculate a negative likelihood ratio, which gives us a value of 0.12. Doing the calculation gives us a post-test odds of 0.016. Converting the post-test odds back to a post-test probability, we have a final answer of 1.57%. So if Mariah's serum ferritin test had been negative, then the likelihood of iron deficiency anemia would have decreased. So to sum up, likelihood ratios are used to assess how good a diagnostic test is and to help in selecting appropriate tests. They have advantages over predictive values because they're less likely to change with the prevalence of the disorder. They can be calculated for several levels of the presenting symptoms, and they can be used to calculate post-test probability for a disease of interest.
Bayesian statistics is a field of stats in which prior beliefs are quantified as pre-test probabilities and combined with the likelihood ratio to calculate post-test probabilities. They allow interpretation of clinical screening or diagnostic tests within their clinical context.